All right, good morning, good evening, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of the world. Uh, this is Pastor Dow. And I'm here this morning because I had um, a friend here on YouTube um, suggest or ask me if I could. I asked him a question. He asked if I could make a video to give him understanding on Acts chapter 10. Because, you see, we were all raised in a particular society, and we were raised in a philosophy to where <clears throat> we, we, we personally believe uh, the Christian doctrine. And, of course, when you really truly look at the Christian doctrine in itself, and, but you're going to have to really truly look at it. You're going to find out that almost every single thing that they preach and they teach is a fabricated lie. That is just the truth. But you have to be able to look behind the veil of Christianity in order to find that truth. Um, there's one thing about us that we need to learn how to do. And that's need, we need to learn how to discern our hearts. Because see, every single one of us will ascribe and say, Okay, I love the truth, I love the truth, I love the truth. And we want the truth. And we'll get on here diligently inquiring about the truth. But what we have never thought about is some of the roadblocks that we have already built up and placed within our own selves when truth comes. See, most of us, we have a desire for the truth because that's what the spirit of truth if he is in you that's what he does he has you to hunger and thirst after righteousness so you'll be filled but when most of us get that truth all of a sudden roadblocks come up barriers come up in our spirit and then the communication comes into our mind what is going to take and what is required in order for us to make the change and so a lot of us when we see what truth requires and when we see what it uh, what change that it demands for us to make we choose to ignore it and when we choose to ignore it we do nothing about it and we put it on the shelf or just cast it over to the side uh, as if we had never even heard it at all and and um, because it you know the truth is going to inconvenience our life let me tell you something about the spirit of Christ Christ come to turn your world upside down he come to take you and just literally turn you upside down and empty you out of all the trash that you have picked up over life since you've been here on this earth. And that's what truth does. See, most of us, we're just not willing to pay what it takes for the truth because it does require sacrifice. Some of us will, some of us won't. Now, for over 20 something years, myself and um, uh, my family here at Straightway, you know, we, we've been walking in the dietary law, the truth of the dietary law, uh, as given um, here in the Holy Bible. Uh, this is not something new to us. I mean, I can go back 10 years and 15 years and, and just give you audio clips of um, how long we've known about this, including the commandments. So a lot of things that you're hearing from us is nothing new. It's just that it may be new to your ears because uh, uh, the Christian philosophy or the Christian religion has never told you anything. And if you're going to learn anything about Christ, you're going to learn anything about the history of the Israelites, the real true Israelites, you're going to have to come out of those churches. Those churches are not going to teach you the truth. Those churches are not going to give you the truth. I've been that road. I've traveled that road. I know Christianity and Christian doctrine better than the people who claim to be Christians. I know it better than they do. And that's the reason why we're students of the scripture and we study to show ourselves approved because we do not want to be deceived and we're not going to be deceived any longer. I felt the impact after I received the Holy Spirit of um, what Christianity has done and the lies that it, it has perpetuated all in the name of Christ and in the name of what it calls truth. So with that all in mind, we're here and we're going to jump right on in Acts chapter 10. Now Acts chapter 10 is a, a story about a conversion of an Italian by one man whose name is Cornelius. And he had a, a vision, but he he was a very um, uh, honorable man because he gave to the Israelites. He gave uh, to the Hebrews. He prayed to their God, and he feared him. Now, Peter also, who was uh, the apostle of Christ, one of the apostles of Christ, he was praying also. And we're going to pick up in Acts chapter 10, and we're going to read. Um, and uh, we're going to start on verse 10. And it says, And he became very hungry and would have eaten. And while he made ready, he fell into a trance and saw heaven open and a certain vessel descended unto him as it had been a great niche sheet at the four corners and let down of the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth and wild beasts and creeping things and fowls of the air. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now, the voice from this vision of this great niche sheet that had all these four-footed beasts and wild beasts and creeping things, it said to Peter, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. And we know who that voice was. That voice was Christ. 
But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. So from Peter's understanding, at that particular time, he thought that the voice was telling him that he could now eat these things. And that's the reason why he replied in direct opposition to the voice and said, I've never done that. Because Peter knew the law. He knew the statutes. He knew the commandments. He's been reared in this thing. He understands what's going on. But look at this. Um, and the voice spake unto him again the second time, What God have cleansed, that call not thou common. You hear that? And this was done thrice. And the vessel was received up again into heaven. Now this was done three times. Do you understand that? And so there we have it. Christianity automatically assumes that this passage here or this whole entire chapter in Acts chapter 10 is, is speaking about clean and unclean foods because Peter saw uh, a great net sheet. Now again, let me reiterate this. Uh, Peter perceived that this is what the Most High or Jesus was talking about because Christ was that voice. But on closer examination, after we read the whole entire chapter in context, we see that God has not cleansed what he had already called unclean. What he was referring to is he was, he was referring to a people, the cleansing of the Gentile nations has just now been opened. And we see that because at the conclusion of this chapter right here that Cornelius and his household received the baptism of the Holy Spirit which many of you Christians and many of you so called Hebrew Israelites don't believe in nevertheless it's in the book um, but when we go down to verse 28 we're going to see clearly there's your answer to this whole chapter that this vision was given to him not talking about animals whether God has cleansed them or not he was talking about the cleansing of of the Gentiles or making it possible for the Gentiles also to be part of the covenant people with the Israelites. Verse 28 says, and he said unto them, now this is after Peter had already made his, his journey and he's got together and he see all these people that Cornelius had gathered together and you're going to have to read the whole entire story because we don't have enough time to go over all that. And it says, and, you, and he said unto them, this is what Peter said, you know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto one of another nation. Did y'all hear that? Another nation. Not another color or non-color. Um, not, not another uh, perspective or religion, but another nation. But God has showed me. Now how did the Most High show Peter? He showed him through the, through the vision there. You see, when you read prophecy and you read scripture, um, the Most High always uses animals. Um, he uses um, um, concrete forms of, of trying to get us to understand uh, what he's trying to say. And um, you cannot come from an abstract Greek perspective and try to understand a Hebraic scripture. But anyway, Peter is saying right here that God had showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. How did he show him? He showed him all these creeping beasts, wild beasts and fowls of the air and four-footed beasts. That's how he showed him because that is how all the nations of the earth is viewed in the Most High's sight. Because Israel is his only people. Now, before all that took place, now let us remember the scriptures in Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us remember Malachi 3, 6. I am the Lord, and I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. That is the character of the Most High. He don't change. Now, before the flood, we're going to turn over here to Genesis, the seventh chapter, and I want you to see something. That the dietary law was already in effect before it was written down on the pages of the book as instructions to the Hebrew people. In Noah's, um, during the time of his his um, expectancy here on his life, in Genesis chapter 7, let's read in context. It says, And the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee I have seen righteousness before me in this generation, or righteous before me in this generation. Now look what he says in verse 2. Of every clean beast, thou shalt take to thee by sevens. Now hold on, wait a minute. What do you mean clean beast? 
See, way over here, before Leviticus chapter 11, which is the dietary law, it already is telling you that there are clean beasts up on his earth. But look what it says. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens, the male and his females, and the beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, and of the fowls of the air by sevens, the male and the female, uh, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth. For yet in seven days I will cause rain, I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made I will destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to unto all that the Lord commanded him. See, that's the key. Noah, Moses, uh, Joseph, uh, David, Jesus, all these Israelites, they, 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 they pleased the Most High because they did what he said. And then, so you can see here, and then you go to Leviticus chapter 11, which we'll visit that real quick. But you see clearly in, in Noah or in Genesis of uh, the seventh chapter that there were clean and unclean beasts already on the earth. Before the dietary law was given. The dietary law comes and it hones it in for us. And to know that it wasn't Moses doing the talking, but it was the Most High doing the talking. Leviticus chapter 11 said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, or Yahweh spake unto Moses, and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel. Notice, he didn't say talk to the Christians. He didn't say talk to the Muslims. He didn't say talk to any other nations of this world. He said speak to the children of Israel. Because that's who this book is about. Speak to the children of Israel saying these are the beasts which ye shall eat among the beasts that are on the earth. And then he goes into great detail. He describes clearly what he wants his people to eat. Now let's go down to verse 6 and 7. And the hair because he chew up the cud but divide them not the hoof is unclean unto you. You ain't supposed to be eating rabbits. I don't care how much you like rabbit. I don't care what these Greek Christians say. You know, I mean, it makes no difference what they say. You ain't supposed to eat it. That's all there is to it. Not if you're an Israelite. Um, even if you're a heathen, you're going to pay for it. Why do you think that we're in such good help here at Straightway? I mean, there's very few congregations that can say um, that we have people ranging from 82 years old to 2 years old and none of us are under any physicians care, doctors care, neither do we take any prescription drugs. That is unheard of in this generation. Unheard of. And neither do we die of cancer, diseases, sicknesses, arthritis, and uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, and all this other stuff that you people die from and that you are, are constantly tormented with. We must be doing something right. Now watch this. And here it is. And the swine. Though he divided the hook and be clothed for it, he get you if not the could, he is unclean to you. So this is the most high doing it. And then he goes on down in the ninth and tenth verse, clearly telling you, you can't be no catfish, no lobster, no shrimp, none of these scavengers or these cockroaches and anything. So the swine that you call pork and pig, according to the scripture, is unclean. The problem is, is that you go to churches that don't teach you nothing. You, the problem is, is that you know, the same institution that teach you that you can eat pig is the same institution that tells you we wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and every day, we keep every day holy. How do you do that? If you keep every day holy, you can't go to work. So you see, the problem is, is a lack of understanding. And hey, the truth is, you need to come out of them churches. You need to come out of her, my people. I keep telling you, and I'll say it again. Christianity is mystery Babylon the great hall have your pastors I'm more than willing to have an open debate or discussion with anyone on this subject as long as there are people present so we can reason together I can tell you right now in 20 years I haven't had had none of them, nobody to take me up on it nobody and it's just a shame too I've told you the truth and it's just a quick summary but I told it to you straight way I hope that the most high grant you understand it